Hi, this is Deadline with City Zen. We're about to show you the GPIO tracker software for Darktronic's GPIO device for the Commar 64. Before I go on any further with the demonstration, I just want to issue my apologies to Mr. Darktronic because we've been sitting on this for a while. And um, the thing is, is it was the programming was just a little more complicated than I anticipated to begin with but we got it done and so now it's available on our github and uh, we're gonna be posting this to CSDB as well so let's talk a minute about what this device actually is it, it adds 32 um, GPIO input output connections to a Commodore 64 much like a Raspberry Pi device you can actually turn on the pins to input or output, but for our GPIO tracker, it's just going to be set to output. Okay, so the first thing that we had to do, set up our own LED banks in order to interface with the GPIO device. So this is just a little montage of that. And um, gonna also include a little schematic how to hook this up now the schematic doesn't cover every single pin on both sides but if you follow the same instructions for both sides and for the other side you just want to do like a mirror of what is on this side a couple of notes here the resistors are 1k ohms the VCC you do not connect and if you put the power switch on the board to internal everything should be fine in this configuration so now we're gonna load it up and test it for the very first time ever I'm only using the very first eight LEDs and uh, if this test goes well then we'll load them all up so it doesn't turn out so well and uh, at first glance I thought that nothing was happening but then I, once I started scrolling down the LEDs started counting in a sequential fashion and this was telling me that two things first of all that the device is communicating and it is working um, and it is also telling me that it's also telling me that it's probably passing the pattern cursor as the value so to me I'm guessing that it's an addressing mode that we need to look at And we're back, and guess what? It was an addressing mode issue that is now fixed. So now, as you can see, the lights are showing up how they should on the first eight LEDs. And you know what this means. Now we need to hook the rest of them up and do a full test. The GPIO tracker is based on the same model as the relay tracker that we did for the Commodore 64 way back when. And it allows you to hook up an 8 channel relay board and sequence those relays. We also created an Amiga version and then for Christmas of 2019 we did a big giant light show based on all these relay trackers. Well, this is sort of the same thing as what the GPIO tracker is going to be doing. It's going to be sequencing these on-off states for the output.
Okay, let's take a look at the GPIO tracker program and its features. We have up in the upper left corner, which it doesn't say, but it is, it's the track. If you press F1, it'll go up and F3 down, but since there's only one track, it doesn't do anything. So in order to get a new track, we have to hit F4. If you hit F4, it creates a new track. And if you notice, now you can go up and down with F1 and F3, right? You can add another track. Now you have tracks 0, 1, and 2. And then you can add another track, boom. So what does that mean, right? So if you look over to the right, you have the pattern block, the pattern area. And in there, uh, you do semicolon or colon to pattern up or pattern down. And what this does is on your current selected track, let's say you're on track one and you hit semicolon, it changes it to pattern zero one. You can go back down to pattern zero or you can make it pattern two. So let's go down to pattern to track two set it to pattern one, right? And in this manner, you set up a new a playlist, if you will. So it'll go through, on track zero, it'll play pattern zero. Then it goes to track one, pattern two, and then it goes to track two, pattern one, and then it'll play track three, pattern zero again. And you can recur these patterns over and over as many times as you like. So now it'll go from track three playing pattern zero to track four playing pattern zero. And then to track five playing pattern one. So that's how the track and patterns work, right? Now so to navigate the patterns you have the home and the, let's see, clear? Yep, clear will go all the way clear to the bottom, right? And looks like we have some data that's already in there. So we can also hit F5 to page up, which it goes one page up. And there's some more data. So what we can do at this point, let's um, take a look at the next box over, and that's your drive and memory uh, stuff. So you have D drive, you can change it from 8, 9, 10, 11, because and those are the drives that you can use. If you have another drive number and you want to use it, let me know and I will modify the software to be able to use any any drive number. But for now, it's just 8, 9, 10, 11. Dollar sign will do a directory. Let's see what it does. It's the GPIO tracker disk with 57 block GPIO tracker program. Uh, F is where you set the file name to work with and uh, the save and load functions will work according to what's set on the file name. You can also erase it if you'd like. And then there's also the new command. N will erase all the memory. So if we go to, let's go back up to the first zero pattern. You see I've already got it embedded in it's the big G, it's the big CXN that we put in there. But if I hit N, it'll ask you, are you sure? You hit yes. Now it'll erase all the memory. I think it should erase all the tracks too that we just put in. Oh, but it didn't. Okay. So the tracks remain the same, but as you can see, all the tracks are now set to zero. So we can go back and set this again. Let's go, let's play track. Let's play pattern three on track three. And then on pattern four, we'll go back to pattern two, and then track five will play pattern one, right? So that's what we can do. So now, you have a basic understanding of how the track and patterns work. So let's do this. On our pattern zero, let's put, okay, let me back up here. So now, looking at the position uh, row down here where it says 4200, 4300, 4400, 4500, 4600. Those are actually the memory locations of where your pattern cursor is at. The pattern cursor will always be in the middle. If you scroll up or down, right, use the cursor keys up or down. Or you can use the F5 to page up, F7 to page down, right, or home. We'll go all the way to the top. Shift uh, home, which is clear all the way to the bottom. 
Okay, so now you can move left and right on the current line that you're on. And you combine that with the up and down, you can go anywhere you want, right? So if you go to a certain location, hit space, it'll turn that LED on or that that pin on for the GPIO tracker. So then you hit go down, you can hit space again, and then you can make your patterns this way. Right? Just go around and make whatever patterns you want. Okay, that should be good enough. Now, let's go and let's do... Let's do this. Let's go down a track. So now if you notice, it goes to track one automatically. Right? So now we can start editing what's on track one. Or pattern one, I should say. It is also track one. So, let's do this. Let's make it say track one. And we'll put a one here. T1. Alright. So now we can go back back up. This is pattern. <coughs> Excuse me, pattern zero. Hmm, I guess I should have said pattern. Let's make this P instead of a T. P1, alright? So then we go, we'll go, <coughs> excuse me, we'll go back, we'll go down another track. This is going to be pattern 2. We'll save this. P. So now let's go back up. P1, P2. I made that a little larger. Let's, let's go ahead and compensate for that. Alright. So P0, P1, P2. So now we have all those different patterns that we can play, right? And now, in order to play, this is how it works. You go all the way to the top, and you just hit P, and it'll start playing. But if you notice, it's kind of slow. No worries. We can uh, hit P to stop it again. And now, if you look all the way over to the right, there's the command block, or the command row, column, I should say. <coughs> Oh, one more thing about the editing in the middle. You can also hit plus or minus, and it will turn on all the, the um, pins, or it'll turn them all off. All right. So let's, all right, let's actually do that in one row. All right. Okay, so now our cursor is on zero, and we can change the command by hitting C, and now you'll see that it has S, one F, now S means speed, and then you can hit equals and star to change the speed. So let's change equal. If we hit equal, it goes down. And the faster you want it to go, does zero work? Yes. So zero is pretty much essentially no time in between. And now we hit P, and it's playing the track. Of course, there's no data filled in down here. You'll have to go in and edit that yourself manually. But uh, once it gets to the end, it should jump to track one, where it will jump to pattern one, because that's what's assigned to track one. Just like a tracker does, like a music track. Yep, P1. And it continues. So let's hit P to stop it. And then I want to show you another thing. Oh, and by the way, if you hit P, it starts playing whatever, where, from wherever your cursor's at, right? 
so you can, if you want to start it off away from the beginning you'll have to jump back up to the first track and hit home but let's say you only wanted to play eight rows there's another command if you hit C once it changes it to the speed command if you hit it again it puts the pause signal the pause command and that's what it does it stops it right there so let's go back to the home hit P boom 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 and then it stops and that's your overview of GBIO tracker software okay and that just about does it for us for this episode of Cities In thanks for joining us as always we appreciate any of your support that you give us whether it's a share a like a subscribe or whatever you have we'd also like to give a special shout out to our patrons which are listed here thank you we really do appreciate it and if you want to see your name listed here and show your support for our channel then all you got to do is go over to patreon.com slash cities in where you can pledge your support for as little as one dollar a month once again, thank you for watching, and until next time, this is Deadline for Cities End.